welcome back well the time has come we're finally going to upgrade to lithium went to the Perth four-wheel drive show the other day managed to pick up this uh, Amtron for a reasonably good price I've been looking at these for a while um, normally I think they're about fourteen hundred and seventy dollars something like that got it for just over twelve hundred dollars so good saving this as you can see is the hundred amp version 150 amp hour 100 amp draw they do do a I think it's 175 amp but I don't run inverters or high draw stuff like that so the 100 amp suits me now this is going to be replacing 240 amp hours of AGM you're looking there at around about 66 to 70 kilos of battery so once that comes out, 19 kilos going back in. So quite a significant weight saving for me. Right, so what we're up to here, this will be main power feed in from the battery going into a 100 amp circuit breaker you can see that's a heavy wire that's 4 BNS splitting down into two 8 BNS now that wire there goes straight to the J hub for all that power distribution and then the second wire is going to my buzz bar here which is then for uh, a lot of my add-on things like the heat diesel heater, some 12 volt wiring I added, all that sort of stuff. Plus also to my two solar inputs come back to here. So that way I haven't got everything going through one wire. You've got it going through two wires, then the main wire to the battery and everything protected by the 100 amp circuit breaker. I have answered this before in another video, but just to um, let you know what I've done with this, you can see here I've removed the solar inputs, I've also removed the auxiliary inputs and the power cable, wherever it is, up here, that is not going to be connected. I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to put a, um, a cover over that so that no one ever accidentally connects it because this unit here is not set up for lithium so I don't want it to do anything to my batteries other than draw power from it. This, this will have nothing to do with the charging of my batteries whatsoever. Over here we've got the twin Smart Solar 7515s. That's for the panels on the roof. That one's for the portable panels. I've also just got a IP22 charger. That's the single output one. You can get a three output one. Uh, not sure where I'm going to mount that yet. Probably over here because that does get quite hot. So I want to put it in a spot where it's well ventilate, ventilated. I've got this duct down here uh, for my hot uh, heater. So that'll give a bit of cool air coming in to hopefully keep that a bit cooler. I might even pack some spaces in behind it because yeah, at full, full bore 30 amps, that, that does get quite hot. Obviously the battery's too big to, to fit in uh, the original battery boxes. So that's why they've come out. So to secure the battery, what I've got is these saddles. I'm going to put the four saddles there, 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 and there. Okay, so I'll have the four saddles, battery will sit in here, and then just um, straps. Strap will go around, underneath here, up over the battery, and then that'll, that'll secure the battery. So you can see with the battery sitting in there with the saddles, just a little bit of room to play, but generally speaking that's going to stop it from sliding backwards and forwards. And then we'll just, uh, there's the straps, and then we'll just do the straps over it like that, and that'll secure it in place. Okay, so slight change of plan. Um, 
yes the battery secure this way and this way but it has got a bit of sideways movement so what I've got is um, I've got some little uh, old pieces of angle bracket I'll just put a bit of angle bracket in under there to, to stop that sideways movement okay so take two I've now put a bracket in underneath here a little aluminium bracket one at each end and that's now solid as yeah can't move that at all so you've got the the um, saddles down either side stopping movement this way these brackets stop it moving that way and the straps stopping it from bouncing so we'll see how that travels if I get too much movement out of it then I'll may have to look at doing something with tying the handles down but I think that's pretty solid I don't think that'll go anywhere we'll just keep an eye on it see how it goes so I've mounted the IP22 charger over on this side here obviously and I'll run the cables down underneath there to the battery but uh, one, one thing I've done is I've packed some spaces in behind here I'll go and get something that looks a bit better that, than that uh, I'll go and get some rubber grommets or something like that but yeah just this unit does get hot and I'd prefer a little bit more of a gap behind it so the other thing you need to do is go in and um, set your J-Hub up as well if you've got a Jayco. Um, now one of the things I did do, obviously you've got to change your battery capacity so it reads right. Uh, but I've reset the alarm parameters to match lithium. So the low voltage alarm is set to 11 volts. And I changed the charge voltage on this down to 13.6. So it's essentially a float voltage for lithium rather than a, a full charge so even though that uh, BM Pro is disconnected if for whatever reason someone ever accidentally connects it when it gets service or something like that um, at least then that that charge uh, profile won't kill my battery right so everything's installed all up and running all good to go you will notice here I've got three wires going direct to the battery so what I've ended up doing is one wire is for the breakaway brake and the second wire is coming direct from the uh, Blue Smart Charger because it's 30 amp. I just wanted to put a heavy wire straight through to the, the battery charger itself. The two smart solar chargers, I'm only running 120 on the roof and 100 portable. So they're only ever pumping out maybe five six seven amps tops each so they then run back through the um, the junction box there and everything coming out of that junction box is individually fused so we've got a bit of double protection you know you've got the double protection of the circuit breaker there all the stuff I've added has been individually fused plus everything there is uh, fused through the uh, uh, BM Pro unit the other thing you have to do is change your programming on your um, solar controllers and your BMV to the lithium profile so what I did I went through and created the profiles first and then once everything was installed I was able to then just go in select the profile and update these to the new lithium profile so a lot less stuffing around once you actually had everything all installed so what I'll do now is I'll, I'll throw up on the screen the profiles that I'm using for both my smart solar controllers and the BMV 712. Still need to do a little bit of homework on them, but yeah, let's have a look at those now. Let's look first at the BMV 712 settings, jumping over into battery. Main things you need to change here, obviously your battery capacity, and then there's your charge voltage. Um, discharge floor, you can take that down to zero if you wish, but 20% is a bit of a safe level. And then there's a few other things that you've got to change depending on your um, battery specifications but these seem to be pretty standard settings um, you'll also note that the battery starts synchronizes turn off and then what I did was I charged the battery first and then I clicked on the synchronize button once it was all installed so that way it started at 100% synchronized alarm settings again you can set these to what you want but uh, these seem to be pretty standard sort of settings from what I've found. You can also see here that the whole system is networked up. You can see that the BMV talks to my uh, solar regulators and that's how they share all their information. Jumping into the save file settings, you can see the two there, AGM and Lithium. So I created that Antron one and that way I was just able to load it up and have everything ready to go once the battery was installed. 
So if we jump over now into the solar regulators and we'll have a look at our settings here heading over to battery you can see the profile there is Amtron LiPo 4 so that was one I created you can see it here you've got your list of predefined ones there's my original one the Jayco AGM so I left it set on the Jayco AGM one and then once everything was installed I then selected the Amtron profile and that was then loaded in and got me up and running. So looking at the actual settings I just used the predefined one that was in there and then modified it slightly, went into expert mode, made a few adjustments, um, I think predominantly the absorption was what I changed but everything else yeah it's just pretty well what standard as it, as it came out of the, the settings from Victron. Uh, you also need to refer to your battery itself to work out what settings are really required. Some of the other settings, load output, always off because there's nothing connected to that. The smart network, you can see there that the two devices, the two uh, regulators are actually synchronizing their charging. That's what I love about the Victron stuff and being able to set it up in a, in a network like that. Obviously with running the two controllers I needed to jump into the second controller and change all the settings on that one using the same profile. So you've got the profile once it's saved into your phone you can then select it on either device so you only have to create it the once and then you can load it onto both devices. Um, that way you know everything's matched up. You also need to ensure that all your settings are matched up to your BMV. Otherwise you can get uh, misreporting of state of charge and things like that. So double check all your settings and make sure they're matching. Well, hopefully that's helped some of you. And uh, yeah, until next time, thanks for watching.